Look at you, it's, it's almost like a zoo exhibit with the ferns behind you and the rocks and you playing with the toys we gave you. <laughs> Weston, I'll have to admit I was somewhat reluctant about the window. Did you sense it? No, Hello? not <laughs> no. No clue. You were? <laughs> just, just a touch. I knew it was going to be cool no matter what. I was just, uh, I don't like to take the chances. <laughs> I see you looking up, which is probably going to be the same. Show me that position again. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the same expression and position. I think 99% of the people that walk back here are gonna be doing. Like, huh? Should we show them why? Yeah, sure. Well, let's just, hang on. Before you go over there, there wasn't just one reason you were being really skeptical on day one. <laughs> <laughs> Things are definitely moving along really, really fast for a Tuesday. I don't know, it's like two-ish. It's almost yeah. coffee time, yeah, right? It's, it's, just, it's just about coffee time. I want to take a set, sit down here with Reynolds from uh, Tussie Landscaping and get what was in his mind with these bowls. Now we had an idea of what to do up here, but I think Reynolds took it to a whole new level. So rather than me try to get into that man's brain, we'll let him talk and tell you exactly what he was doing. So basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a way adding fire at the top with the water at the bottom and make it all work together. So we have the new aquascape fire, fire spillway bowl. Fire spillway bowl, which is going to have a wire coming out the top of the stone here, and then we've got a spillway of water that's going to fall from this bowl into the bottom bowl. We wedged the second bowl in between just to tie it all together, kind of make the trio look there. And this bowl is going to be pouring water into this with the bottom spillway bowl as well. All of them are going to be lit up with the color changing lights. So when it's running, you'll be able to sit around the fire at the top or walk down through here, feel the flames. Water got some mistures worked into it, so this whole area is going to be bathed with mist going down through here, and this is going to be a fire, mist, and water whirlpool all coming together down in the, in the walkway. Oh, it's so awesome! So, just uh, really enhancing kind of your experience as you come across these stepping stones coming in through here. We knew we wanted to add something up on top here, and the fire element is going to be great with a couple of cozy chairs right next to it. It's going to come back down, it's going to be amazing when it's all finished. going out through the sunken reservoir area. So we're just kind of finalizing the position of the urns. The bowls are hung. We're ready to roll on that. We've got Jonathan and Corey over here working on the plumbing. So we got two pumps in here. We're gonna have a 5PL, which is gonna feed the bowls up top. That'll handle that head pressure. And then we've got a SLD, which is a solids handling 5,000 to 9,000 pump that we're gonna manifold and spider off that will feed all of this lower fountainscape, the stuff that's not suspended from the ceiling to make all this stuff rip and a lot of action. Notice that we are continuing to incorporate these patio ponds. This will help us set our peninsula out from here. The bottom of this bowl is about two inches below water. So the reason we have this small aqua block underneath here is to help us figure out elevation of this bowl as well as rocking it around it. If you'll turn behind you, you can see Weston very carefully trying to set stones along the side over here. This is gonna set that peninsula area in between the liner for the reservoir and the liner for the pond. And then, that, then the water will overflow and kick to the right of those rocks. Go that way and then the waterfall will come down into the reservoir. So we got the pond estimated. The way Weston works, this pond will probably get done in about 25 minutes. He just knows how the weather limestone fits together. This rock that they work with all the time. So they are gonna fly through this section. Hopefully Ed and I can keep up. yours I didn't get mine look at you it's, it's almost like a zoo exhibit with the ferns behind you and the rocks and you playing with the toys we gave you <laughs> Weston I'll have to admit I was somewhat reluctant about the window did you sense it no, Hello? no, no, no clue. you were <laughs> just, just a touch um, so I you're think, coming back I think you know I knew it was gonna be cool no matter what I was just uh, I don't like to take the chances but we explained um, I think the very first week or before any of the artists 
this actually came in here, the whole purpose of the sandbox is to actually experiment. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna do it, do it here. That's right. right? Like, Might lead to catastrophe. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but it's not your customer, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> it's gonna be cool. Explain a little bit though what you're doing to hide this. So in the past, you know, we've got this seat wall on this side. Yep. And to achieve what you're doing right now, we would come on this side with another seat wall and bring our liner up in between. And you can do that. It's just another whole layer of wall you have to build. And complex, and then what yeah. really happens is that capstone over there it's won't work really, anymore. It's really wide. So you need a, a customized capstone to fit on top, which gets complicated. I love what you're doing here. So explain kind of like you've got this liner up here, and so, we obviously don't want to put a bunch of boulders here because then the water would come yeah. out too far. I, I don't want to do, I, I've done that already where you kind of like try to do it with thin rock. Yeah. It's never stable and it always gets fat anyway. Yep. So what we have done, just is kind of like an improvised idea. I think actually Matt did it the first time. We used a uh, poly deck board. This is regular wood, which I wouldn't use permanent in any permanent scenario. And just basically rip a piece of deck board down to an inch and a half wide, screw that across the top. So yep. your screw holes are all at the top, way up as high as you can get it. Yep. And then we just, let's go over here and I'll all show right. you. So then I just take these boards and put them in vertically. I only screw into that top that I piece that I put up there that's already tap on yep. the block, so I don't have to tap on each and every one of these. Plus the back of the block is not necessarily a perfect radius, it kind of gets flat, there's holes. So this kind of evens that out and gives you a nice smooth radius to mount your vertical boards to. So here instead of using a flexible piece of wood, you yeah. improvise, just use a piece of conduit, which yeah. I think is actually genius. We like, were looking for anything plastic yeah. with bends because we didn't have poly deck board. We tried it with wood and it just broke when yep. we tried to bend it. So we're like, hey, conduit. And it's strong enough that the screw threads bite. And so we screw it to the top and then the bottom is just floppy. It's yep. not secured because we don't want screw holes down there. And then so once we'll we get some gravel, gravel in there, yeah. that'll secure it. Yep. It's not going to float away because it's all screwed in. Yep. And then I noticed you put a bead of silicone in between the I conduit in here. Because I was a little worried that if this comes through and pokes the liner, I want to get this as full as possible. Yep. Like on an actual installation at home, if it's below two inches below the cap, I'd say that's good enough. Yep. But because we're trying to get this effect with the glass window, I'm sealing everything so we can get right up to the tippy top yep. of water without losing any. That's awesome. So yeah, it's going to be pretty epic. And then the other thing we did, we did, uh, Matt did this first time too, just drill a hole with a hole saw and install like a little puck light. Wires come out the bottom and hook them up. That's awesome. Get light all the way through. That's going to look amazing. With this cap finishes over in here, this is going to be a pretty yeah. amazing the section. The thing I like about this is it's super low profile. Yep. So your original capstone that you would have for the wall block anyway covers this up as well. And so you just have capstone and then instant water. It's you know, going to be great. So the best thing about this, it doesn't take up the real estate a bunch of rocks did. If you wanted to use rock, it would take an enormous amount of time because you got to get the rock right up to the bottom of the capstone to hold the liner and everything else. This allows you to put the capstone on, fish can then swim right up next to this. This becomes kind of a seat wall to actually feed the fish. And this is really fast and simple. Yeah. You can literally do this in, I don't know, I maybe did 30 minutes. I mean, really the cedar, I mean, this is cedar. Yeah. Underwater, it'll last just as long as the poly would. Would it? A number one question I get is how long will like a piece of driftwood last in a yeah, pond. Yeah. Completely submerged forever. Like my cedar post for my pergola pavilion thing goes down in the water. It's been there 12 years and it's solid. Really? Yeah, it's That's when amazing. it gets wet, dry, wet, dry is when it would start really in. Because your water is coming up so close to the top, yeah. I mean 99% of it's submerged, it would do fine. Yeah. Now I wouldn't use treated lumber that has like arsenic and some yeah, of that other exactly. stuff in there. That's actually not good. Yeah. But cedar or the poly, like some of the composite stuff would work yeah. effortlessly. We've done it probably the first ones we did are maybe five years old now and they're fine. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I see you looking up, which is probably going to be the same. Show me that position again. Yeah, that's going to be the same expression and position. I think 99% of the people that walk back here are going to be doing. Like, huh? Should we show them why? Yeah, sure. Well, let's just, hang on. Before you go over there, there wasn't just one reason you were being really skeptical on day one. <laughs> I actually like this. You know, I would say we did this at a flower show years and years ago. Took the idea from Joey, artist out of Canada, that unfortunately he's, he's not going to be able to yeah, yeah, yeah right like i'm sure the banter has already started but all of our inspiration comes from something that we saw somewhere whether we're spinning off somebody else's idea or yeah. making it our own and i think this is awesome was it a little bit of extra work yes yeah. but this yeah. running is going to be pretty amazing it's basically like it's not even realistic like it'd be you'd have to have just the perfect scenario to do this in somebody's yard like you'd have to have some structure oh you'd have to build a big pergola structure yeah. have the oldest tree in the really world realistic yeah but it's just like this crazy wow factor well and like we said earlier today or like 
like I said, you know, over a month ago, if you're gonna try it someplace, try it here, right? Like, so the Sandbox Studio is all about experimenting and trying different things, and it's gonna be amazing. I think we'll actually, when we get it running, learn some things. What could we do different? How would we do it again? Sure. And so next year, we'll try to figure out how to get maybe 20 bowls hanging from the ceiling, yeah. or or we'll learn that maybe one was enough and the ceiling <laughs> couldn't support. <laughs> like, we'll bring the whole room. Oops, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is like both of these ideas, these concepts, is something I wanted to try at my own place. I haven't yet built a yep. like, proper koi pond at my place. I don't want to do the window like this. I want to do a koi window at my place. I've never yet done one, so this is like my chance to like get my hands yeah. on. Ed helped, which was yeah. amazing. I was glad Ed was here. And I want to do this on a much smaller scale, like just underneath a normal pergola like that. Mm -hmm. You know, hanging it from. Yep. So take three bowls, much smaller scale, and do that. So I wanted to kind of get the concept of playing with the chains and hanging them, which I haven't done before either. It'll be fun so. to you know really study how the water is falling out with X amount of gallons per hour. Yep. Do we need 2,000 gallons of water per hour? Do we need exactly. 3,000? We've got a little bit of head pressure <laughs> here, <laughs> about 20 feet <laughs> straight up. So that five to nine, we'll have to look at that chart and see what it says <laughs> at 20 feet. Let's go get Dave but Kelly. It, sh it should be all right. <laughs> It'll be fun to see what that happens. And this area lit up is going to be pretty crazy. Oh, there's even lights up there. Well, really, Weston, when you look at what got accomplished today and so awesome to have Crux and his buddies out here doing the hardscape. Really glad. It's looking really, really good. I'm really glad they were here. Like, yeah. If we would have had to do that yet too, I don't know if we could have pulled off the design. We'd have had to cut something. But yeah, this is great that we have those guys and they know what they're doing, which yeah. is always key to any project. People that know what they're doing, right? Exactly. But when you look at what got accomplished with this, this was all dug out today. That was reworked. All the plumbing for that's done. You got your pump vault in, feeding that stuff over there. You've got all those hung up. You know, basically today we kind of worked through the little time consuming stuff. The rest of it is kind of run this the is, mill. This is what we do. Yeah, over like, setting. We can do it in our sleep. Yeah. And I say we, and I don't think I have anything to do with any of this right now. So You were over here yesterday. Well, I was over here, and it's going to be Weston's <laughs> favorite part of the project, minus, <laughs> minus the window and that. <laughs> Brian was on beanbag duty yeah. today. <laughs> well, we started the beginning of day two with saying, hey, today kind of sets the pace what the rest of the week going to be like knowing if we're going to be up here up late Wednesday night and Thursday night finishing it. I don't want to take the gas off the pedal, pedal off the gas, you know, floor off the mat. <laughs> but I'm in very, very comfortable where we're at. I think we should still push hard tomorrow. It'd be great to have an easy day on Thursday rather than a crazy hard day on Thursday. So that's a close for today. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.